course does say that this world is backwards and upside down. It does say that you cannot judge your advances from your retreats. And so, that's a good baseline, I think, when you enter into spirituality. You know, if you were told that from the beginning, it would actually make it a little bit easier and more palatable when things like the wheels falling off or all the trials and tribulations that human beings go through, it would help a little bit to know that it's backwards and upside down and that, that when you are sleeping and you are dreaming a world and you've forgotten that you're dreaming, then you're really twice removed from reality. And just making a movement inward in your mind towards that peace and that truth is going to be very disconcerting to the ego. So, a lot of times when people, they want like spirituality to be an aspect of their life in the world. That's the way it's described. Even now we, you know, you can, you see yoga over the last couple decades has become much more popular. You know, even mentioned yoga like on, on the news media, and, you know, it's kind of filtered into the mainstream. Uh, I don't think the course is really um, filtered into the mainstream yet, but I can say that, that it's so deep and so profound that everyone who's taking the course is going through uh, intense emotions, uh, significant shifts and changes in their life. Uh, it's, it's like, sometimes it feels like you're getting hit with a tsunami. Like, what is this book going to do to me? And where is this all leading? And um, it's been fun for me to travel around to different countries, because I went to Argentina quite a number of years ago, and there was a group of women studying the course, and they didn't know about anybody else in the world, what was happening with the course or whatever, but it was so intense that they said, uh, is it supposed to go this way? Are we doing it wrong? Uh, basically was what they thought, because there were so many intense emotions coming up, and they were going through such huge upheavals in their lives, that they thought they must certainly have missed the instructions or been doing it wrong. And actually, they were very sincere, and I said, no, you're working the course, it's, it's going just right. It's, this is how it goes. Uh, there's six stages of the development of trust, as talked about in the Manual for Teachers, and four of the six are challenging, disconcerting, uncomfortable, you know, they're described in very, uh, you might almost say emotionally, it's like they're described in terms of the negative emotions you go through when you go through it, and that's four out of the six, so that's two-thirds. And I think that paints a much more realistic picture as you're getting into this journey, to know that ahead of time. Uh, a lot of people, if that was right up front, advertised up front, they would say, Turn the TV off, or let's switch to another program. You know, I would do their ballet, or you know, something a little more soft. Um, but when you go deeper, uh, the rewards are immense. And so, for myself and for the people I live with, uh, I know people will talk about guidance, and teachers have different. Um, different perspectives on guidance, but for us, we, we live on guidance. We live daily on guidance, and it comes through to me, and it comes through to the people in our community, and that's why things flow. That's the only way things flow. We, we cannot rely on our past learning, and we have come from varied backgrounds, different cultures, and many of the people that I live with uh, on a daily basis are quite accomplished, some of them have, have been quite accomplished in terms of the world and skill development. Um, and yet, once you come into the course, you have to forget everything that you've ever learned. Yet, even your skills, even if they're quite sharply developed, you have to give them over to the Holy Spirit to let them be used for awakening instead of building a bigger, better self-concept. So it's the complete opposite direction of everything that the skills were made for. We wouldn't have spent all that time in education and refining and honing skills and going, you know, follow-up and extracurricular activities and all the things we've done if, if we really knew that, that they were all misguided, that they were all being used to prop up pride. 
uh, then we would have paused for a moment and said, let's take a deep breath here. <laughs> and how do we reverse from pride to humbleness? How can we get so forgetful of these accomplishments and skills that we come into the humble presence of God and that the skills can still be used, but just to, to glorify the One. Uh, they're just used for love. That's the only law that's meaningful, the law of love. And all these other make-believe laws have just been part of the chaos and confusion and disorientation and disillusionment. No matter how accomplished we become in this world, there's something that's still a little frightened child underneath all the things that are being done and accomplished and moved. And um, all it takes is a major catastrophe and suddenly that fear is right in the forefront. It's not so hidden anymore.